In this video, we are going from craft room crazy chaotic carnage to oh my goodness, yes please and thank you. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. I am excited for this video guys. I am so excited. I have been wanting to film this video for about three to four months. Why haven't I? I knew it was going to take me ages. So if you follow me over on Instagram or on the Makers Central app, you will already know that I am now an affiliate for Shadow Foam. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, ready? <laughs> da, da, da. I don't know. Does it suit me? <laughs> Shadow Foam, if you have not heard of it, is a really cool foam storage kind of system. <laughs> Now, there are quite a few videos of people using it already, and some of you who follow me might already have seen it over on Wendy at Toonpish Crafts channel. When I first heard about Shadow Foam and I saw them a couple of years back, it was really predominantly to do with storage of tools, equipment, and it's the coolest kind of storage system. And I really didn't see much in the crafting world. And then Wendy over at Toonpish Crafts, a lot of you that follow me also follow her. She's incredible. She got hold of a sample pack. You can get them on the website. I'll show you that now. So just to give you an idea of what I am talking about, I also got a free sample pack and... <sighs> This is what the Shadow Foam website looks like. I will link their website down below. They've got lots of different inspirational ideas on here, particularly tools, but like I said, we are breaking it in to the crafting world. On here, you will see so many different examples of how you can use it. You can look through the sheets that are available, whether you get small or medium. But what I actually did was I went in to the custom size and I actually put in my measurements. Here it is. It is huge. <laughs> I measured the space that I wanted it to fit and I actually put in those dimensions and it was pre-cut and sent to me. And I also ordered it in the color teal because it is stunning. Now, if you'd really like to know more and you just want to try a little bit, you can actually get a sample pack from Shadow Foam. It's £5 and they send you a £5 voucher as well to then be able to spend on the website. I've got my hat back on. <laughs> <laughs> so since making this pack I've learned so much I actually watched Wendy's video and I kind of picked up on a couple of the tips that she was giving and it took me a while so this here took me around about 40 minutes to make the first two I was a little bit tentative I was kind of working out how it works how it feels um, but by the time I got to the end of the row it was bang bang bish bash bosh so so easy to use I then um, put my blade back real safe <laughs> with a little note reminding myself that it's a sharp blade and now it is time to get to work biggest tip I can give you is that masking tape will be your best friend on this project. After watching Wendy's video and having a play myself with the sample pack, I have to tell you now, masking tape is the way forward. But my current layout is chaos. It is utter chaos. I have these seven tiered like nail varnish stands and they served a purpose at the time. But honestly, guys, I use 5% of all of this stuff 95% of the time. So we are going to declutter. We're going to use the foam board. I am going to create my absolute dream storage for the pigments that are my go-tos. If you've been following me, you know I use almost the same pigments, the same brands, the same things over and over again. And the, the rest of it kind of just sits on those seven tiered trays. If I'm honest, getting in my way, those take up so much space, over a foot of space on my worktop. So here we are. Like I said at the beginning, masking tape is your friend in this project. This is gonna give me a visual of where I want to lay things out. And then I'm gonna create some masking tape templates of each individual thing to be able to cut the hole into the foam. So you order the foam in a sheet and then you cut out depending on what it is you want to lay in there. Now, as you know, if you've been following me a while, you'll know I use a lot of Let's Resin powders, chameleon powders, etc. But I also have this glow in the dark box and I thought it would be perfect to actually put the box in. So this foam is multi-layered. I'm hoping the lines are coming across on camera. You can dig down a centimeter, you can dig down five mils, you can dig down like two inches. So depending on what you want to put in, 
is depending on how deep you actually cut your foam. The first thing for me to do was create a template for my Let's Resin Chameleon Powders. Now, this was just a rough, a rough kind of guide. I will say one thing about Shadow Foam, that template that I got, the not the template, the um, starter kit, that little pack that I got, that really helped me to practice and kind of get my head around how to use it because that first, second, third cut, Trust me, you get better as time goes on. The more you do, the more it's just second nature. And honestly, by the end of this, I wasn't even using a template. I could kind of gauge, visually see how much I needed to cut away and the templates just went out the window. But here we are. This is my very first cut on this huge board for my Let's Resin Chameleon Flakes. Now, I am using a little template here that I've stuck down over my line. The reason I've put that long line of masking tape across the top is because I want to keep a border around the top and the side, obviously, so my things don't just fall out. They've got a wall in there to keep them in. Now, here's the thing. You just stick your fingers down. Once, you, once you've kind of cut your hole, stick your fingers down and look at this. It's massive. It's absolutely way too big okay this was my first hole what I did then was I cut the template smaller so I kind of by my second hole I realized it needs to be smaller by at least a millimeter on each side and then you just put your blade down in one single stroke across is all you need. Now, if you did watch Wendy at Toompish Crafts video, she did start off like I did and used the knife like a bread knife, like you're cutting, you're cutting bread, like you're going back and forth, back and forth. There's no need to do that. You simply place the blade down into the foam, one smooth cut, and you are good to go. Now, how deep you want your hole to be is fully dependent on what it is you're putting in there. So you stick your fingers down and then you pull back the foam. This foam, like I showed you, it is layered. So the foam naturally comes away depending on how deep down you've actually carved. You can dig out one layer, two layers, three layers, or like you'll see very, very soon when I put a whole box in there, you can dig out so, so much. In fact, if you really wanted to, you could cut all the way through the foam. I didn't need to do that, but that is an option as well if you've got some really big things. Now you can see here, I'm kind of, I am speeding it up for you guys because yeah, it was lengthy, it takes a while. This is kind of why <laughs> I put I put this off for so long because I knew it would mean it would mean the luxury of time, the luxury of time being able to sit in my craft room for a solid two to three hours and get this project done. And we all know uh, now that I've got a puppy, that's not my life anymore. So anyway, once you get it, you get it. I can't explain it. It just becomes this really easy second nature thing that you're doing and at this point I started actually just drawing around my pieces um, on some masking tape but I then ended up drawing around my pieces straight on the foam. Now if you watch any other videos on YouTube and I know Wendy at Toompish Crafts tried this as well, place your items down on your shadow form and cut straight around your item. So if you're using it, say, for your for your sewing, like your cotton reels, placing the cotton reel or even your hair dryer or your straighteners, placing it down on the shadow foam and cutting directly around the piece. Now, I don't feel confident enough to do that. That is why I use masking tape templates and I am telling you, it is the way forward. So here you see me. I'm shoving my fingers right down in there and I am ripping out chunks because this is going to be a box and I want this to go much deeper than the pigments are. So you can see I'm just checking it out for size and there's a bit of a an uneven surface so I'm just going down to get it to the next layer. You can see really clearly here how the layers are divided up. 
a higher layer there and I'm going down to the next layer so that my box of chameleon flakes actually sits a lot deeper in there and it's more secure. Now Shadow Foam do a whole array of tools. They actually do gloves, which I do have a set of, you know, for that sharp blade, it's <laughs> very, very sharp. Yes, I could have been wearing gloves, but honestly, uh, yeah, I didn't think about it. I think I'm just, it's easier to work without the glove, but do be safe because that blade is super, super sharp. They also do a smoothing tool so you can actually smooth out the surface of the inlay that you've cut. So they do so many things on their website. Definitely check it out. So here I am again, masking tape, my bestie, my absolute bestie when I was doing this, making sure that my lines are straight. <laughs> I'm, it doesn't, really matter if you get a kind of a wibbly wonky one um but yeah for my own brain to function I wanted to get this as neat I know you don't you rarely hear me say that I wanted to get this as neat as I possibly could and I was so happy with the way this was looking I really wanted to create kind of like an abstract so we'd have some pigments we'd have a whole box then we'd have some more pigments and then, you know, to the left, I'd put a whole box. And the, the idea of putting a whole box in there really only came to me when I took those glow in the dark powders out. I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to take me forever. <laughs> Guys, I went the lazy route. I actually went the lazy route. Now, if you know me, you know I'm telling the truth because I saw like a pack of 10 glow in the dark powders and thought, oh my gosh, that's 10 holes. And then I thought, wait, I don't need, I don't need to put every single pigment in individually. I can actually keep them in the box, as you see me doing here. Hello, genius. <laughs> keep them in the box. And because my shadow foam is so deep, I know that I'm going to be able to dig a hole, to cut a hole, should I say. I am not an archaeologist. To cut a hole that is deep enough to house that huge deep box. Now, to cut a hole deeper, you just have to cut down, keep going down. So my first layer, you see my first cut is just the surface and then I know it's layered foam. So I'm going deeper and deeper and deeper each time with the blade to get right down in there. Like I got right down in there. You can see me here digging it out. And I just made sure that the box fits nice and snug because the last thing you wanna do is cut a hole that is too big. It's okay to cut too small because you can just make it bigger. But if you cut too big, uh, <laughs> It's not okay. But you could see the definition, the defined lines between those layers there. And as soon as I got down really deep, I thought that is enough. Otherwise I'm gonna touch my desk. And I just slotted it in and oh my gosh, it was absolutely perfect. I was buzzing at this point. I was so excited to get this organization going. Now these pigments here, Resin Pro, you all would have seen me use these so many times. They are one of my favorite mica powder brands. I've already put my standard Resin Pro colors into that sample pack that I got. Now I need to add the rest, which are all of my neons and a couple of extras that didn't fit on the sample pack. So again, I just created this template because I'm cutting around the template, I'm just reusing the template. And even if it gets kind of tatty, I started kind of being able to gauge what I need to cut away. So even when the template just got a little bit tatty around the corners, I was able to just cut because I kind of knew at this point what I needed to do. I wasn't even really that bothered about cutting it so that the lid, you know, like where the shape of the lid goes in, the lid is slightly narrower than the bottle. I really wasn't even worried about that shape because I knew that it was perfectly snug in there. And even though there's a little bit of gap, like a mill around each lid, they're still not going to come out because they are snug as a bug in a rug. I just kept on going until every single Resin Pro pigment that I know that I'm going to use. This is the whole thing for this project. These are my go-tos. What took me the longest time is I just stared. I sat in my craft room for an hour staring 
into the blank abyss of chaos that was all of my pigments. And I had to make the decision, I had to make the choice, which pigments are my absolute go to's which ones do i use all the time these are the ones that i want to showcase these are the ones that i need to be able to grab real easy have real access to because i'm telling you those tiered trays serve a purpose but they really do mess up your mind you know <laughs> and i knew that this was going to give me clarity now i now have to move on to my vista liquid pigments these are beautiful pigments so I have cut out myself a bit of a empire state building template here for my vista pigments I have a black and a white large bottle they are my go to black and white pigments like I said they are liquid they they mix so beautifully into resin it's incredible until you've tried them you just don't really get it look how easy this is for me now I'm on a roll I am on a roll. I was literally calling downstairs, do not disturb me, do not talk to me, I do not want a cup of tea. I don't want to take breaks because I am winning this. So I just went ahead and I was just happy at this point. It was all coming together and you can see what I mean when I talk about the random placement of items. It's random but it's neat, you know? We've got boxes, we've got big bottles, small bottles but they're all in a line. <laughs> I couldn't stray too far away from it all being in a line and all being symmetrical because I'm going to be looking at this for years to come in front of my face. So I knew I needed to make it as neat as possible whilst still giving me actually something quite pleasing to look at because I was kind of mixing it up with putting big things next to little things and whole entire boxes in there. But yeah, I was so, so happy with the way these two came out. Now, the black and the white, like I said, they're my go-tos, but I do have some smaller Vista colours. I only have three that they sent me. However, I have ordered an entire box. I think they come in like a box of 10 colours that are this size. So you will see further in the video that I do leave room because I know I've got all my mica powders sorted. I've got all of my go-to mica powders sorted. I've got my chameleon powders sorted. I've also got my neons sorted. Now I need to make room for my liquids. Now you can see here it's a bit big bit too big, a bit wobbly. However, I put the black in and look what happens. It pushes the foam and now look, it is as snug. I am honestly, I, I was in my element doing this and it was almost therapeutic because I actually made sure that I had a solid three to four hours where I was just I had nothing else to do. This was my mission. Okay, we have got this far. Now, next up, another huge box. This is my Let Resin Alcohol Inks. Now, if you've been with me a while, you'll know I don't use alcohol inks that often. Like, I really don't. So, I was... Mm, kind of cogitating i was contemplating whether this needs to go in however what i did do was even though it says a box of 18 i actually packed it out with all of my go-to colors so all of the christmas all of the really bright go-to colors that i would use that is what i've put in there so when i do grab it i know that it's going to be full i've got all of this space still left to fill now i was also tempted by the way to put my blowtorch to make a cut to cut a hole for my blowtorch but I did decide against that because knowing me I'd put it in there when it's still piping hot <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure that this is not going to be fireproof. Now next up are the most beautiful mica powders you would have seen me use in previous videos from the Colour Cottage. Now I have a lot of these and what I decided to do, hindsight is a wonderful thing, I decided to cut an entire shelf, like a whole shelf out of the top and just slot them in like this. And whilst they look gorgeous and it worked, it did work, I've got this foam wedged in under a shelf. The top layer there, so the outside edge, um, the wall on the outside was a little bit flimsy. So 
I probably wouldn't do this again. So if you are watching this video and you're thinking of doing this, I think it would work further down the board. So if I cut individual holes across the top and then further down the board, I created a shelf, then I think it would have worked out better. There would have been more firm grippiness, if that makes sense. So I just went ahead and made another row underneath. I've got all of this space left for all of my Vista liquid pigments when they arrive. And then up the top, I've got even more room for some of my Let's Resin Chameleon powders, which I haven't even opened yet. Like it is insane. I was so tempted to put my box of gloves down here. But then I remembered that every time I order some gloves, they come in different size boxes. So there's absolutely no point. I have started off with this absolute chaos in the corner of my craft room. I get to look at this every day when I film. And honestly, it is distracting. 5% of these were used 95% of the time. It wasn't worth having them all out. And now I am in heaven. Absolute heaven. I cannot tell you how clear my head already feels. Look at all this worktop space. Like it is crazy how much space I have just created by simply having all of my must haves, all of my go to's right there where I need them. No more clutter, no more chaos. At the moment, it is wobbly. I haven't attached it to the wall because I've still got things to add to this. However, I decided it needs to be attached temporarily so you can see right at the top there just between the shelf and the shadow foam board I have wedged <laughs> and I mean wedged some of that foam that I cut away and now it's safe it is solid it is not rocking I can take things out and it's not rocking I can put things in like I cannot tell you how happy this has made me all of my absolute favorite products my favorite pigments right here where I want them I still have my glass cast pigments and my let's resin powders to put in and my vista liquids when they arrive they also need to go in here is three baskets I have four but here are three baskets filled with all of those products that I'm not using on a daily basis Everything in my foam board sheet is daily use. Everything else that can go in a basket and it can go on a shelf for later. How neat does this look? I can't even cope. I cannot tell you. As soon as I sat down after doing this, this feeling of absolute clarity came into my brain. I was like, I'm going to be able to focus. I haven't, I'm not looking at this. I'm not staring at this mess every time I'm doing something on my worktop. I've, I'm just completely surrounded, visually overwhelmed with my space. And now, I'm sorry, I cannot. After I finished filming, I actually found a cheeky little bottle of resin pro powder that was hiding behind all of my chaos. So luckily I left a gap and I slotted in that little pink bottle you can just kind of see it there the resin pro powder I've, I'm just so happy I left a gap perfect for it but like I said I've got a few more things to go in here I've got my glass cast liquid pigments I've got my let's resin powders and hopefully along the entire bottom of this foam board is going to be my Vista liquid pigments. Now, thank you so, so much. If you are still here, that is incredible, guys. We are nearly 23 minutes in. I appreciate you massively. Like I said, I am now a shadow foam affiliate. So if you are interested in getting hold of some shadow foam for anything, for your tools because I'm thinking now I want some in my shed in my workshop I want to be able to put my tools in I want to be able to put my actual carbides I don't have any storage for my carbides this would be perfect for those so yeah so many uses so many things you could actually do with it and go check out their website as well. They are also on YouTube. They have a YouTube channel. I will link that down below. And please check out the description box for your 10% discount over at Shadow Foam. If you are interested, don't forget you can get that sample pack as well. So massive thank you to everybody who has stayed this far. This is a game changer for me. It's a game changer. I feel lighter. I feel well, you know, I wish I, uh, not physically, but <laughs> mentally I feel lighter. I know that I'm not going to have all of that chaos distracting me every time I'm creating something and everything I need is right there. Thank you all so much. I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Bye.